So the jurors in the Everton Bittersing murder trial have retired now to begin their deliberations. Uh, and it's now possible to talk about some of the things that the jurors didn't hear and uh, briefly the reasons why. Um, this is one of the saddest stories I can remember covering and it some days feels like I've covered the saddest stories in the world. This is the story of three kids, uh, two of them full siblings, one a half sibling, who came to Canada in 1991 from Jamaica, their, their native country. Um, they were then just young, thir uh, 13, 14, and just turned 17. Um, and they came to join their dad, Everton, who is now charged with murdering Melanie, one of them, and his new wife. Uh, this is a very common thing with people in poor countries. You know, in Jamaica, they would have had virtually a guaranteed future of poverty and not much chance. So it's normal that people send the kids in an extended family off to the, the country where somebody's gone and, you know, is doing sort of well. Uh, uh, Everton Bittersing wasn't doing particularly well, but, you know, even doing sort of half-assed in Canada is better than doing half-assed in Jamaica. So anyway, these kids come to Canada, to Toronto, and they're all gorgeous kids, as kids are. They're these long-limbed country kids from, uh, you know, a ghetto in Jamaica, filled with hope and optimism. And what they arrive to instead of a better life is just an appalling situation. They move to an apartment in Parkdale with Bittersing and his new wife. They already have two kids of their own, so they're the special spawn. She's pregnant with a third child. They're all jammed into this one bedroom apartment and the Jamaican kids come to be treated essentially as domestic slaves. Melanie got probably the worst of it. She was uh, 14 then and uh, she had to take care of the new baby. She was not allowed out of the house, out of the apartment, unless she was in the presence of one or another of her, her caregivers, or her dad and her stepmother. Uh, Cleon, the older boy, uh, was forced to become a drug dealer, so he had to hand over all the money to his dad. Those two were sometimes forced to uh, sleep in the balcony, take showers in the balcony, urinate in the balcony. Uh, Cleon's uh, was even forced to take a DNA test shortly after arriving in Canada to prove that Everton was his father because the stepmother didn't like it. She insulted him and said, you know, he had nigger hair. I mean, it's just appalling, the small and large cruelties. Anyway, um, one of the things the jury didn't hear anything about except that he died tragically in 1992 was Dwayne Bittersing. Dwayne was the baby of the three. He was 13 when he came here. Um, and he died mysteriously in, after about 18 months in Canada. He fell or somehow went over the balcony of their 22nd floor apartment. And what the, the judge ruled that this wasn't, uh, this was too prejudicial potentially for jurors to hear, but some of the rest of us knew about it in the courtroom. Toronto police investigated the death. They reinvestigated it later, in fact, when uh, they were investigating Melanie's death. Melanie, Melanie is the girl in the burning suitcase, as she was sometimes called. She, her remains were unidentified for 17 years. Uh, it is alleged that Everton Bittersing uh, and his wife starved, abused, and basically drove her into a death at the age of 17 and then put her remains in the very suitcase that she brought to Canada from Jamaica, took it up to an industrial area in Vaughan and set it on fire. That's why she wasn't identified for so long. But what was hard, I think, for the jury to understand is the effect that Wayne, Dwayne's death had on the other children, including Cleon. Cleon testified at the trial and probably no one could understand why he'd never come to his sister, sister's rescue, why he was so frightened of his father. Well, the reason they were both so frightened of those parents is because of Dwayne. Dwayne had run away and stayed overnight with a family friend one night. His father found him the next day, brought him back home, and within a matter of hours, he went over the balcony in what is still presumed to have been a suicide, but he was dead. And you know, so you, anyway, you have these three beautiful kids. This is really a story about the pervasive nature 
of child abuse and violence to, to young kids because Dwayne ended up dead mysteriously. Melanie was murdered. Her father is now on trial. The mother will, the stepmother will go on trial in April. And Cleon, who is now an adult of about 41 years old, is deeply damaged because of everything that happened to him. And it breaks your freaking heart.